groups that uh, have helped us draft these guidelines. I'm joined here today by uh, the County Athletic Director, Mr. Kirk Harrell, and I certainly appreciate his efforts. He has worked extremely hard, did a lot of research uh, from different athletic organizations around uh, the country to help us identify some best practices when it comes to uh, getting back into the mode of athletic training and conditioning uh, for our student athletes here in Bay District Schools. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that the summer workouts uh, for high school students will begin on June the 1st. Uh, we're going to monitor the situation, uh, see how things go for a week to 10 days, uh, make sure that we have all the resources that we need, uh, and make sure that you know everything's running smoothly. If that's the case, like we expect it uh, to, then uh, we're going to allow middle school students to return as well. And I expect that no later than uh, the middle of June. Uh, so we're, we're excited that we have this opportunity uh, amongst uh, the, the pandemic situation. Um, I know that our student athletes are, are anxious to get back uh, in the weight room, uh, start conditioning, and uh, also to see their teammates. I know that's a big deal for them, and, and their coaches are excited to, to welcome them back to campus. Um, also, we've uh, developed some comprehensive guidelines, and, and you have a copy of that. Uh, they're going to focus on some sanitizing, disinfecting. It's going to be critical. Small groups and a reduction in the overall numbers of student athletes uh, that are going to be able to gather at any one time. They'll be aligned to the CDC guidelines. That is... Uh, essentially what we have to base our decisions off of, as you may know. Uh, everything we do, of course, here in Bay District Schools uh, is based on the safety of our students. And so uh, we kept that at the forefront of our thoughts when we were putting these guidelines together. We must keep our, our students and our coaches, our staff safe. And um, I feel very comfortable with what we've put together. And uh, moving forward, uh, we will most likely begin in phase one of Florida's Road to Recovery Plan. And uh, the guidelines are pretty stringent. Uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. it. It's gonna be a challenge for our coaches to, to uh, enforce, but uh, if they follow the guidelines, which I know they will, uh, then, then we're gonna be in good shape. Uh, we're gonna have to keep groups uh, to a minimum. I anticipate uh, some rotation of groups from coach to coach in different stations. Uh, whether it be in the weight room, to the gymnasium, um, outdoors, uh, different uh, workout stations and drills and, and so forth. Uh, so it, it's, it's going to look uh, different than it ever has before, uh, but that's what we're dealing with right now. And we, we have to make the best of it and, and like I said, keep our student athletes safe. Uh, we are implementing phase one of our guidelines now. That is the plan for June 1st. Uh, if if and when the governor uh, moves us to phase two, we're prepared to move into that mode as well. And that is outlined in, in our guidelines. Uh, we have uh, guidelines for phase one through three uh, in anticipation that the deeper we go into the summer, we're going to be moving into those phases. We're hopeful uh, that that will happen, but it's of course out of our control. And, uh, but we do anticipate the ability to do that as we move uh, deeper into the summer, uh, certainly towards the end of June and the beginning of July. Our athletic directors will be coordinating and working out schedules with the coaches to ensure that uh, all of our athletic teams have opportunities to work out, uh, to use the facilities. It's gonna take a great effort amongst all of them, some collaboration, but I know they work well together and, and they're gonna share. This is the time for all of us to work together, pull together for our, for our kids and our student athletes and make sure that uh, they all have the opportunity uh, to participate. Um, ultimately, the responsibility will be on the principals uh, to ensure that all the guidelines are followed. And of course, uh, myself and our county athletic director, Mr. Harrell, will be here to provide any assistance that we can uh, to provide uh, any supports that are, that are necessary. One of the biggest changes students will notice is that uh, our locker rooms are going to be closed. We're going to ask our student athletes to come prepared to work out when they come to school. We're trying to limit uh, a gathering of students in confined spaces. So we ask them to come prepared to work out when they arrive um, on the school campus and then they are going to depart afterwards and, and they will be able to shower and change whatever they see fit once they get home. Um, also, uh, 
water bottles. We encourage them to bring their own water bottles. There'll be no sharing of water and, and water fountains. Uh, we will uh, certainly provide water, but there's going to be uh, no sharing of cups and so forth just to be on the safe side. We have to put these safeguards in place, obviously. Um, our coaches are certainly, I mentioned before, looking forward to welcoming, welcoming our student athletes back uh, for conditioning. Summer conditioning is very important to, to all involved. And um, I've encouraged our coaches, our athletic directors, to ease our athletes back into the process. Uh, many of our student athletes have been unable to uh, participate in much activity. And so it's gonna take a little time before they get acclimated and before they are, are, are fully capable of, of participating in, in, in full workouts and to get back to where they were before. And so we've encouraged our coaches to, to start slow, assess where they are right now and, and develop a plan for the individual athlete and, and, and build from there. And so that's what I anticipate the first week will be geared around more assessing the current state of, of physical uh, uh, ability or stamina with, with each of our student athletes and developing a plan for them and moving forward. Um, as far as uh, any questions, I will be certainly happy to answer them. So feel free to ask. I, I do have one question. Sure. Um, I see that it, there's a temperature check required for students when mm -hmm. they, they good, come to work good out. Question. It seems pretty um, normal now. It re you're requiring a temperature check for uh, yes. different places. Uh, how will they get thermometers for that? Is that something that you guys will help um, you know, them out with here? We will provide the thermometers or do the kids have to bring them or what? How? We are providing them? each high school with, with two th thermometers actually to, to try to alleviate uh, you know, an overcrowding process. We obviously want to keep uh, the social distancing aspect that is part of the guidelines. So yes, uh, student athletes will be uh, temperature checked upon arrival. Um, but uh, I think what's really important is communication here. And, and coaches and, and students and athletes, they have great relationships. And communication is going to be very important. Uh, if they're not, if our students are not feeling well, they need to stay home. And I think that comfort level with their coach will go a long way with them being able to communicate, hey, coach, I'm not feeling well today. I need to stay home. And, and we're going to have to be very flexible with that uh, throughout the entire summer. And so that's, that's a good question. But, yes, we are going to be checking temperatures. Okay, and, sorry, I didn't want to jump on you, Blake. <laughs> I, knew, I saw your mouth open. They've had uh, several questions, as you can imagine. It's, there's going to be some challenges, uh, but for the most part, they're just excited to be able to see their student athletes again, to be able to um, interact and, and see their faces uh, face to face, uh, as opposed to over a computer screen or on the phone. So uh, I think they are, they are grateful for the opportunity uh, to get back to work with them, even in a limited capacity. It, a lot of it depends on uh, the governor's directives. If we move into the additional phases, then we'll be able to start incorporating some of those additional activities. As long as we're in phase one, we're very limited to uh, simply conditioning and, and, and fitness type activities. It could, uh, it depends on the level of the sport. If it's a high risk type uh, activity or athletic uh, event, such as uh, wrestling or football, that would be in phase three. If it's uh, something a little less, um, that requires less physical contact, such as baseball, uh, that would be in phase two. And we've included that in the guidelines as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so right now, basically in phase one, it is like you said, really individual, you're, you're gathering as a team, but also it's, it's really individual conditioning, right? Because you can't, you know, even with some of the, the heavier weights, you can't do that because you probably spot, you know, spotters touch, you know, contact. So it's really just very, very small, very, uh, very basic type of conditioning, right? I mean, 
we're really you're you're right when you say you're easing them back into it. <laughs> very very much so, and, and that's going to be something that the the coaches are going to have to be really on top of their students and and making sure that uh, they they continue to follow these <laughs> guidelines because they're going to have naturally they're going to want to congregate and they're going to want to you know push the limits and, and I don't blame them they've been cooped up for for two and a half months so. Uh, you're you're right. This is going to be a lot of individual activity uh, with coach direction, and uh, you know this is just uh, a starting point. And like I said, hopefully uh, we'll be able to move it to the next phase, and we can lift some of these restrictions. Then uh, that's obviously we have protocols for that district wide, and uh, they will obviously be referred to our, our medical staff to the Department of Health and, and we'll follow their guidelines for that. And I know a lot of sports don't actually play during the summer. A lot of it is just strength and conditioning like with football you can do summer workouts. But baseball does play in the summer. You have a couple of summer mm -hmm. baseball games but those will be still kind of postponed till we get to late, later on into phase two. We are, we are encouraging our coaches to uh, attempt to schedule and, and push back the, their schedules for for summer ball and, and so forth uh, as late in the summer as possible. Uh, they can do some preliminary scheduling, uh, but as far as finalizing schedules, it's, uh, it's just not the time to do that right now. There's too many uncertainties. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm good. Cool. Are you, are you <laughs> Kirk? Kirk? 